Hey guys, this is Doug with Fellowship of the Martyrs .com. Want to try to talk to you a little bit about at least a piece of what my job is. As the Lord's explained it to me as I see it, my job is to discomfort you. My job is to shake everything in your life that can be shaken. To hold up a mirror and say, do you see this? Does it look like Jesus? Is it okay? You sure you want to keep it? How did it even get there? Whose idea was it? Were you listening to God about that? My job is to shine the light real bright on doctrines and dogmas and denominations and systems and structures and processes and procedures and, and myths and things that you've believed that you fabricated in your own head to excuse your own behavior, whatever. My job is simply to create uncertainty that drives you to your knees seeking answers from God, that drives you to the Bible, that drives you to the Word, to, to search out and seek out and be Berean and search the Scriptures and study to show yourself approved and stop listening to man. My job is not to, to tie things up with a tidy little bow so that everything is settled and that's it and we've got, bam, this is our process and our procedure and let's go and it's all good. My job is to do the best that I can do to show how big God really is and how much you've constrained him into a little box of your own making. My job is to crush that lens, that filter, that box that you put him in and put you on your knees seeing that, that your relationship with the Lord is mangled or twisted or insufficient or, or rare or haphazard because of you, not because of him. My job is to unclog your pipeline so you can hear him real good and he can direct all your paths. My job is to do everything I can to make sure that you don't follow me. And since I'm not capable of that fully, because I don't know who is and who isn't, the Lord helps substantially because I prayed over and over, Lord, don't let me make this about me. Let them seek you. Let them find you. So what happens is, when somebody does start looking to me, the Lord does something or has me do something or has me speak something that will wig them out so that they'll never want to follow me again. Praise God. It would be nice if they didn't overreact and start throwing rocks and hating me, but at least I'm not an idol. Well... They still obsess about me and seem to make me the point of their whole life, so. But, I don't want you following me. I want you following Jesus. If you hear Jesus speak through me, obey it. You're not following me, you're obeying Jesus. If you hear Jesus speak out of your little kid, your wife, a sunset, and you obey it, that, you're following Jesus. You're not following a sunset or a little kid. If Doug speaks out of me, then rebuke it. Whatever. Smack me. Tell me to knock it off. Do it in love. I mean, that'd be nice. My job is to wreck your life to completely crush 
the status quo that you have got comfy with. That is revival. You don't get revived until you die. Until everything that you've known dies. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, In thanks for his mercy, we offer our bodies as living sacrifices. Sacrifice. This is our reasonable act of service. Given what he's done for us, the least we could do is offer our bodies as living sacrifice. Holy, pleasing, and acceptable. Okay, that means you got to get cleaned off first. You got to say you're sorry, get all washed up. You don't put a three legged ram or a one eyed lamb up on the altar. You get cleaned off, you make it holy, pleasing, and acceptable. Then you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? And you'll stop conforming to the world, and then you'll know what is the perfect, pleasing will of God. You get up on the altar, he hacks your head off, grafts his head on, and then you know what God wants. My job is to get all of you on the altar and to show you the parts you're leaving off. Because you don't, you, don't, you don't put half a bull on the altar. You, you put the whole thing up there. If you're, if you're going to offer up your body, then offer all. No matter what. And then lay there naked until he comes at you with a big knife and hacks your head off. And it'll hurt. And then he'll put his head on. You'll have the mind of Christ. You'll know what is his perfect, pleasing will, and you can go do it. And then the rest of Romans 12 explains to you what to do now that you got the mind of Christ. And now you can do it. Because you're going to love each other. You're going to be one body. You're going you're to love your enemies. Because you stopped conforming to the world. And you laid all on the altar. My job is to show how screwed up, how mangled, twisted, satanically upside down and inside out is government, church, marriage, traditions, doctrines, dogma, denominations, the American dream, over all the things that you've grown up with and that you're sure, the Protestant work ethic, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, don't trust God, God helps those who help themselves, which isn't in the Bible, by the way. All these things that we've learned about sexuality, about, about relationships, about forgiveness, about unforgiveness, about that are just clogging you up and keeping you from God. And, and they're going to be, have to be rebooted. And, and when you run an antivirus on a computer and reboot it, you may lose a lot of data. I mean, it, it may... It may, if you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, we're going to have to reformat your hard drive and start over. And it's going to hurt sometimes because there's some stuff you don't want to let go of because it's comfy. And my job is not to tie it up in a little pretty bow and give you some cliche little answer, just follow this doctor and this program, do 40 days of this, and you're going to be great. It don't work like that. God is way too big and way too creative, and his ways are not our ways. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of the Lord comes when you understand how big he is in contrast to how little you are. And you get some respect for a king of the universe that knows every cell in your body by name. Every muon, every quark, every atom, every electron by name and knows where it is at every instant. That kind of God knows what you're supposed to have for breakfast. That kind of God knows what you're supposed to wear and what job you're supposed to take, what you're supposed to say and when you're supposed to shut up. That's the God we serve. Show some respect. If you don't let him out of the box you put him in, he's gonna bust out of it anyway because that's what this time in history is about. He is going to show you how big he is. Don't listen to me because it's comfy. I pray to God over and over that it's not comfy to listen to anything I have to say. It should wreck you. In the name of Jesus.